Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky, sponsored by Squarespace. And it is September, and there's a bit of a transitional month between the summer and winter constellations. So we're going into the autumn constellations now. But coming up this month, we have the Milky Way core, but not for much longer, so you might want to make the most of it. We do still, of course, have the Cygnus and Cassiopeia region of the Milky Way. It's time to keep an eye out for Taurid fireballs. It's also the month with the most sporadic meteor activity of the year, and we have the return of Orion the Hunter. But before we deep dive into all of that and more, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the place to host your website or online store. And I speak from personal experience because my website's been hosted on Squarespace for years now and I've been a very happy customer. I use it to advertise my workshops and sell my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Squarespace handles all the payment, everything's automated, and it means I can spend more of my time taking photos of the night sky. And then I can upload those to the galleries on my website, which look amazing as the images don't get compressed like they do on Facebook, Instagram, and other social media platforms. So if you'd like to give Squarespace a try, head to squarespace.com forward slash Allen, have a free trial, use one of their award-winning templates to start, edit that to your heart's content. And if you're happy with your website and you want it to go live, use the code Allen at the checkout to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name with Squarespace. Starting in the Northern Hemisphere, where facing towards the Circumpolar constellations, you can see Ursa Major dropping down towards the horizon as the evening progresses. As I mentioned last month, it's my favorite orientation of Ursa Major in its upright position and nice and low on the horizon. You'll also notice the Cassiopeia region of the Milky Way, along with Perseus and Auriga rising into the northeast. Facing west in the evening skies, you might get a brief glimpse of Mercury, but even though it reaches greatest eastern elongation this month, it's really not a favorable elongation for those of us in the northern hemisphere. You will have a much better chance of spotting the bright Venus after sunset. Facing south after sunset, you'll notice the Milky Way core already in the south-southwest and it sinks down to the horizon setting around midnight, so coming to the end of Milky Way core season now, so you might want to make the most of it. But as the Milky Way continues to sink down to the southwest horizon, you're left with the great rift of the Milky Way standing almost vertically in the west, so you can get some nice west facing compositions with the Great Rift of the Milky Way this month. And the Milky Way core is being chased across the sky by Saturn and the very bright Jupiter, both of which came out of opposition last month. In the east this month, you'll find Pleiades rising from the northeastern horizon and climbing high into the eastern skies. That's closely followed by Aldebaran and Hyades another star cluster nearby still in the constellation Taurus and for those of you early risers or those of you who have been out the entire night you will also see the return of Orion the Hunter so the winter constellations on their way we're in that transitional period now of the autumn constellations and it won't be long for the winter circle is back in the sky Onto the southern hemisphere and facing south towards the circumpolar constellations, you'll notice the small Magellanic cloud very high in the sky, the large Magellanic cloud pretty low in the evening skies, and the Crux and Carina Nebula really coming down to the southern horizon, so very low on the horizon now. Facing west in the evening skies after sunset, you guys in the southern hemisphere have a much better chance of spotting Mercury and right above Mercury is the bright Venus. The Milky Way core starts the night pretty much directly overhead, and that sinks down to the western horizon, almost parallel to the horizon, and the Milky Way core is being chased by Saturn and the bright Jupiter. As the Milky Way core begins to set in the west, you will notice Orion the Hunter so the southern summer constellations are on their way back. 
As for close approaches, this month on September the 10th is the best opportunity with a young crescent moon and Venus in the evening twilight. And then on the 17th and the 18th, the moon passes by Saturn and Jupiter. Full moon this month is on the 21st and it's the harvest moon and it's quite often rises in beautiful colours of orange thanks to the dust that's kicked up into the air by the farmers collecting their crops. As for special events this month, after the Perseid meteor shower last month there are some big footsteps to follow. Um, but we do have the Alpha Aurigids, which peaks at the start of the month, around the 1st of September, but sadly only sees a maximum of 10 meteors per hour under perfect conditions with the radiant point above your head. So not the most active of meteor showers. And then on the 10th of September, the Southern Taurids meteor shower becomes active. It doesn't peak until next month, so I'll talk a bit more about the Southern and Northern Taurids in next month's video. But the Taurids do bring a high number of fireballs. So if you see a huge meteor this month, trace it backwards and if it's pointing towards the constellation Taurus, you've just seen a Taurid fireball. And it's also the month where we see the highest activity of sporadic meteors for the entire year. So just random meteors not associated with any meteor shower, they can fall in any direction. So keep an eye out for some sporadic meteor activity this month. And that's all I've got for you guys. It's a bit of a transitional month, so we're saying goodbye to the Milky Way core and saying hello to Orion and the winter constellations coming over the horizon in the pre-dawn hours. Now onto the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new year, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph and upload their images to social media using the hashtag Wittens. I then pick my favorite three to win a prize. Third place wins my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a t-shirt. And first place wins a photo view photography guidebook of their choice. Last month's theme was Milky Way. And there were so many images to choose from. In third place was Miss Liss Photography with a stunning image of the Milky Way core rising above South Australia. Absolutely beautiful colours and a gorgeously composed coastal scene. In second place was Alexandre with this stunning image of the Milky Way. Just absolutely incredible detail and some gorgeous mountains in the foreground. Really loved this image. I really loved this image. But in first place, although he just about got away with the Milky Way core, there's a little bit of Milky Way core in there, is this stunning image of the Perseid meteor shower from Mike in Colorado. Just an absolutely beautiful image with some colourful meteors raining over the mountains of Colorado. So, well done to Mike. This month, seeming it's such a sporadic month, I'm just going to let it be a free-for-all, so whatever you guys capture this month, absolutely anything i'm not going to set a theme there's so much you guys can do this month but thanks for tuning in to another episode of what's in the night sky and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon i wish you good luck and clear skies